Hello friends, you are watching data structures using C. All the videos are brought to you by Angpro Training from Angpro Technologies. And friends, in this video today we are going to learn uh, the algorithms for different queue operations. I recommend you to watch our previous video on Q which is part 1 uh, so that you will understand the class in this video right so in the previous class we have learned that there are two major operations that we can perform on the Q one is NQ uh, which inserts the element into the Q another one is DQ which takes out the element from the Q so today we'll start our class with the algorithm for NQ operation. So NQ operation performs the insertion of elements into the queue, right? So this is our queue structure. So here we are representing the queue in the form of array. F and R uh, are two pointers, integer pointers, are, uh, always pointing to the two ends of the queue. F for front end, where we remove the elements R points the rear end where we insert the elements, right? Currently, they are not pointing any location uh, because they are not initialized yet. So, algorithm uh, starts from uh, for NQ operation. Uh, before doing the NQ operation, first we'll check the queue. If the queue is full, produce overflow error and exit. So, if the queue is full, you cannot insert an element into the queue, right? So, if queue is full first produce the error. So we'll also write a code to check uh, whether the queue is full or not. If queue is not full, increment the rear pointer to point to the next empty space. In this context, we'll increment the rear pointer to 0th index and add the element to the queue location where rear is pointing. Right? And return success. So this is the uh, general algorithm for NQ operation. So now we'll understand the DQ algorithm. So, so this is the status of the queue after insert after inserting three elements into the queue. So 10 goes to the zeroth index, 20 in one, 30 in two. So the front end front pointer is pointing to the first element. It points always the first element, and the rear is pointing to the fourth element, which is empty yet. If you are if you want to insert an element, we go and insert into the position, into the location where R is pointing to, right? So, so check if the queue is empty. If the queue is empty, produce underflow error and exit, right? If a queue is empty, you cannot delete or you cannot take out any element from the queue. If there is no element, how can you take out any element, right? So we'll write a code also to check Q is empty or not, right? If Q is not empty, access the data where front is pointing, right? So if if you know if you know that Q is not empty, if you are assured that, just go and access the data, take out the data and print it out. Increment front pointer to point to the next available data element. So after deleting this ten from the Q, just make this pointer f pointer to point to first index that is the 20 element and return the success right so now we'll uh, understand how c code works for nq operation so this is the code for nq so in the nq function here we have declared one variable called data uh, which is the element to be inserted into the queue. First we will check whether rare equals to max or not. So here max is a, a constant, right? So here we have defined max using hash define statement, hash define max some number. So if rare, that means where we uh, actually insert the element, if that is equal to max, you cannot insert the element. So we will tell Q is full, you can't insert any element. So rare is also a pointer, so here rare is a pointer which always points to the rare end where we can insert the element, right? If rare is not equal to max, so rare is, if, if rare is not equal to max, we'll tell the user to enter the data which is stored in data and we will put the data into the array which is representing the queue. 
Q of rare. So rare is a pointer here, which is the normal, a uh, normal variable in this context. We are not making it as the pointer. So we will just increment it, and we will make this variable acts like a pointer, right? Q of rare will hold the data, and we will make the rare pointer to increment to the next location so that we can insert a new element next time, and we will print the message data inserted into the queue. And this is the function for DQ. DQ takes out the element or deletes the element from the queue at the front end, right? So before deleting the element, we are checking whether rare is equal to front or not. So why we are checking this rare equals to front? Uh, because rare and front are global variables here before execution of any operation. So we are declared uh, rare and front as global variables. So when global variables are not initialized, by manually, they are the default values in the rare and front or normally global variables is uh, zero. If both are equal to zero, then we have not initialized them, so we didn't input any element also, right? So if rare equals to front, Q is empty, you can't take out any element. So if this is not deleted element from the Q is the position where front is pointing to. Q of front will be printed out so that user uh, will be assured that this element has been removed and we will increment the front to point to next element so that we can delete that element next time. Right, so this is the code. And we will see the code for display operation. So same here, same thing here. If front is equal to rare, Q is empty. That means we have not inserted any element. If that is not, elements in the queue are displayed using the for loop. When i is front, i is less than rare. Until i remains less than rare, we go and print all the elements in the array which is representing the queue here. So here we have used many C concepts, functions, if, else, loops. So if you want, if you are really not understanding these concepts, so I recommend you to please go and watch our C playlist programming in C, where we have explained all the basic concepts, all the basic programming in C language. Now you'll understand the complete C program to implement Q using array. So if you don't know what's an array, how to implement and all, uh, uh, please go and watch our C programming playlist. Okay, so here we have defined the constant called a max with the value 6. So wherever we use max, it is replaced by the number 6, right? And these are Q, front and rare are global variables. So the variables declared outside of any function is known as the global variables. So these are known as global variables. And if we, if we don't initialize global variables, they basically hold the default value zero. Front and rare, these variables hold the value zero because we have not initialized them. Q of max is initialized with six, Q of six. So now the array size is six. Uh, the array that we are going to implement as Q is, is this variable Q of 6. Now we can insert maximum of Q, 6 elements into the Q, right? So let us start from the main function. So main function has a switch where we can switch between the different operations of the Q. Case 1 is for NQ operation, case 2 for DQ and case 3 for display operation. So where we are getting uh, these numbers? So from the CH variable, so we are inserting the content or the number into the CH by calling the menu function. Let's go and open this menu function. So this menu function is telling the user to insert an integer representing one for insert, two for delete, three for di display and four for quit. So whatever you insert from one to four will be stored in CH and that is brought to this variable CH. So if you insert one, NQ operation will be called. So let's go and check the NQ operation. So if the rare, so data will be stored in this data variable. If rare equals to max, that means we have reached the end of the queue. We can't insert uh, the queue, linear queue is full, right? If that is not happened, queue of, so this will be executed, which we have already discussed. So if you enter two, DQ operation will be 
executed where it is here so this is the DQ operation we have already discussed this and this is for display operation so please write this program in your book pause the video and start writing this program I hope I didn't compact anything here so now let's understand the applications of C where this so now let's under, so now let's understand the applications of Q where we actually use the Q it is used to schedule the jobs to be processed by the CPU if the CPU is handling uh, multi jobs then the jobs are scheduled using the Q the job which is entered first will be processed first by the CPU so CPU uses the Q when multiple users send print jobs to a printer each printing job is kept in the printing queue then the printer prints those jobs according to the first in first out basis right in the breadth first search algorithm also we use the queue well friends that's it for the class subscribe to our channel on YouTube like our page on Facebook follow us on Twitter and join our group on LinkedIn thank you